I wish that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And there's a little story behind that oh, that nobody knows about. We love. I'm Grace. I'm Mary. <laughs> that was very elegant. Thank you. And today, this might get cromped. We have guest Nick Crompton coming on. You know, we're talking about all things Shane's docu-series, mm -hmm. Inside the Mind of Jake Paul. Yep. So we thought, why not go to the source itself? He said yes. I was yes, shocked. He said yes. He said yes, and he doesn't like, he also said like he never says yes to these things. I feel privileged. Mm -hmm. I feel scared to talk to him like a reasonable, rational adult. We just watched episode four mm -hmm. of Inside the Mind of Jake Paul. We had a lot of thoughts, but let's see what the internet is saying about it. So basically the fourth episode is out by now, but the second one is where people started to feel um, some criticism of the way in which the material was being presented. And yeah, Shelby Ferguson said he's playing sad music to make a sad mood, play scary music to make it creepy. A lot of people were not huge fans of the way that the editing was done with the way in which they're talking about mental health. Shane loves scary movies, mm -hmm. so I think there's levels to where he just loves that editing, even maybe if it's not like sure. perfect for the subject at hand. It was also just ironic that he's talking about how sociopaths will use sad music to manipulate people and that he was in fact doing that and then his apology was saying he was just trying to make it entertaining. That's not, that's manipulating. That's very true. <laughs> Shane responded to all of this um, criticism by saying part three, four, and five on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, refilming some stuff today to address concern to part two, but I think it's a good thing I'm going to make the conversation better and less dramatized. Jake will be in part five. I know it feels like I'm milking it, but trust me, it was necessary. The coming out and saying I'm milking it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I almost fell off after episode three, and so, oh. yeah, I thought it got a little slow, but episode yeah. four reeled me right back in. He was milking it so hard, and we know she's lactose intolerant. Oh, you know. <laughs> he was milking it so much, I skimmed through it. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Oh. You got one okay. more? <laughs> Any more? I had to skim through it because my phone was at 2%. Oh. Okay, oh. ow! Here's the question where we're at that I think everyone's kind of answering from themselves going back and forth as new parts of the series come out. Are these bad behaving YouTube celebrities sociopaths or are they just entitled, spoiled young people that have never had to face consequences? They're not mutually exclusive. No. I do think that these are kids who have access to money and a lot of eyeballs on them and don't have to face consequences and that might be a factor in why their behavior is so bad. Yeah, I also don't think I can ever hear the word sociopath ever again. <laughs> it has become I know. such a cringy word. It's like when you just look at a word so long you don't know, like an easy word, you don't know means. if you're spelling it right. Of sometimes trips me up. Oh, you think it's O-V? Yeah. <laughs> Episode three had Shane digging into Jake Paul's family, both his parents, who are vloggers, which made me think of if my parents vlogged and how different it would be. The one time my mom came to a show of ours, mm -hmm. we oh, were backstage. She was the mayor of the show. Oh, <laughs> people like swarmed her for a few pictures. And she comes back, haven't seen the woman in like nine months. She goes, y'all take your time, I'll go distract them. <laughs> and walks back into the audience to take more pictures. She had a fan club. My dad wouldn't know how to do it. If I gave him like 24 hours being like, hey, will you film your day for me? He'd come back like so apologetic they couldn't figure out how to turn the camera on. Oh, see, my dad was an actor, so I feel like my dad would send it back to me and it would be like a full musical. Let's see what other people thought about episode three, the family episode. Mm -hmm. Ness God said, I feel like everyone has sociopathic tendencies. Some people just more than others. Obviously, just because you have sociopathic tendencies, Tendencies doesn't make you evil af LMAO. What about that made you yeah. laugh your ass Why off? Why are you laughing your ass off, Ness God? Maybe you do have some tendencies. <laughs> yeah. Sure, I put the word God in my name, but. <laughs> if Shane gets Jake to cry about his past in person, I will devote my religion to Shane, thank you. I mean, that's a little snarky of a comment, but I think the interesting thing is that Shane is opening up a world of Jake Paul that we don't know. I don't know necessarily that going into it with the hypothesis about sociopath right. tendencies or whatever is the right way to do it, but I am fascinated because it seems like a lot of the behavior is a byproduct of the parenting. It's a lot about who you're surrounded with, and one of those people was Nick Crompton. Nick Crompton, who is the subject in episode four. What were your takeaways from this episode? Oh, Shane has never seen an elevator. Elevator. It 
took 30 minutes for him to get in that elevator. If he ever sees an escalator, I mean, I think he might pass out. He's, I mean, he's, the mouth will never be closed. He's like so impressed by the wealth of this house while wearing a Chanel backpack. He's got like a Chanel or Gucci backpack walking around going, the opulence, oh. <laughs> I, I love you, Shane Dawson. It's killing me. Oh, the running irony through all of this is getting me good. Well, I say we reset this set and mm -hmm. have our first like really intense interview, two on one. I mean, I think that we are basically two Barbara Walters. Oh, that's a person who used to interview people in the 80s. Oh yeah, Shane didn't start interviewing, like he didn't start the idea of interviewing people. No. Yeah. Here we go, it's Here our we first go. big interview, don't f this up. Okay, Good. okay. Nick Crompton. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me. You must be exhausted. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big week, big couple of weeks yeah. with everything. Yeah, I right. kind of hide myself and shut myself off during things like this. Oh, see, I do that just in life. Yeah, Without also of that as well. surrounding me, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, don't worry, you're in a safe space because Mamrie and I don't know how to do a serious interview. No, yeah. not even, this is the first time we've set our set up like this before. I like it. It's very, we're gonna comment more on our own set than yeah. actually what's happening. We've here. never used a mug. We have mugs now. This is the first time. <laughs> first yeah. mug. Cheers. Cheers. Spoiler Cheers. alert, it's water. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an intense week. You're mm -hmm. saying that like Papa is like following you and things like that. There's always someone asking a really awkward question that you don't want to answer. Get ready for 15 minutes of yes. it right here. Oh, yeah, when was your last bowel movement? <laughs> <laughs> I had two this morning. Around... Really? Humble brag. Yes. Do you have any food allergies? Nope, just cats. Oh. I don't Do you, eat cats. Are you no, 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 no. <laughs> Are you out? Because it's making a comeback. We actually just watched the part of the Shane doc yeah. that Nick is in with Nick, and that was surreal. That's like yeah. going to a movie premiere, and you can see the stars of the movie on like the front row, and you're like trying to watch them in your peripheral, but don't want it to be awkward. You don't want to make it uncomfortable, and you were so gracious to watch it with us, because I can't imagine that that's comfortable for you either. Definitely not. Yeah, so we're making this about us, when really it's about you. <laughs> Once again, once but again. Really intense, and I think uh, you have a great, great sh head on your shoulders. I mean, literally, your hair looks yeah. great. What, <laughs> so, which leads us to what is your morning routine? I only do my hair like three times a week. <gasps> and you sleep. And then you just. Do you, do you sleep on so pillows? Uh, no, the hard pillows that make my hair look like a triangle when I wake up. Stop it. Wow. So then I just have to brush it out. Do you like go into your pillow and it perfectly fits and it's just like, <laughs> oh, and it's just like a little trophy case for your head all night? No, but I should definitely do that. I was most surprised by how surprised Shane was to apparently see an elevator for the first time. Yes, was he raised Amish? <laughs> How long did he actually interview you? Because you were like a, a progressive dinner. You went like from this room to <laughs> another room. I was like, the yeah. seasons change. We, I thought it was just gonna take like an hour or two just mm -hmm. to like, you had lunch this plans. is what happens, goodbye. Yeah. I thought mm -hmm. that was what it was gonna be, but we were there for like six hours. No way, yeah. wow. Did you have to cancel plans? Like, yes, I actually did, text. I did, yeah. We're still not fully well-versed in Team 10, and I don't know. I'm 35. Yeah, I'm 33. Just say that. Um, and <laughs> so, if for an alien that came down yeah. to planet Earth and knew nothing about this world, how would, what's the log line of Team 10? Mm, good call. So we called it a social media talent label. Each person would get a full team put around them. Okay. And they would, Team 10 would take 20% as a normal management would do. And they would live in the house, they would wake up every single day and make content with each other. It was the easiest way to make people collaborate mm -hmm. every single day and cross audiences. And it became this thing where people were so obsessed with just seeing the dynamic of everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 20%, did that include an editor? Yes. Oh. I know. Do they have room? <laughs> well, you helped start it, right? You helped yeah. create it. How did you and Jake meet each other? I built a company in the UK with a couple of people uh -huh. um, called Social Chain. Okay. It was a social media marketing agency. And it was from that I then looked for investors to do a different business when I felt like my time had come to move on. Mm -hmm. um, and during looking through investors, I met someone that worked with Jake. He connected us because my idea was similar to what he wanted to do. Okay. And we ju jumped on a Skype call and we spoke for like an hour or two. And he was like, yep, 
I want you to come and help me build this company. Follow-up question. How long have you been lying about your age? Because you have the intelligence <laughs> of like a 50-year-old fully experienced businessman. He's talking about getting investors. How old were you at that point? 21? 19. Okay, I was only getting investors. That meant like getting people to buy me beer. But <laughs> <laughs> She was an entrepreneur. Oh, very much so. That is crazy. Okay, and then once you're in it, like how, what was the creative process every day when they would wake up? Every day was completely different. Okay. There was always different things going on. Um, in the early days, Jake was on his Disney show, mm -hmm. and so he would spend the whole day at Disney downtown filming, and then he'd come back like seven, eight o'clock, and then film a full YouTube video. We film one day a week here and then we just count on the hours so we can go have martinis on our own couches at home. Yeah, I rationalize 4 p.m. on shoot days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a question. Yes, I'm sorry, sorry for We're it. just gonna bounce around yeah. all over the place like this. That mom who was like, be gentle, you keep them famous. Gentle, they make you famous. They make you famous. They make you famous. How much do you hate her? It's hard to dislike Oh, good call. People. When you are so much better with your words. <laughs> no, no, no. You are so much more thoughtful with how you talk yes. about things. Trust me, during that period, mm -hmm. I wanted to kick her head in and right. be like, yeah. go away, I don't want... Yeah. But now it's like, I understood what she was doing. Her, their kids were watching every single day sure. and were in love with what we were doing. I wanted to see us, and the address did get leaked. True. Yeah. So, when you have a child that's like, I want to see this person, we can just drive right. by, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Like, and you've seen everyone doing it as well. Mm -hmm. The mom's gonna be like, oh, well, I feel bad if everyone else is doing it and you're not, Mob so. Mentality. I think about that too. Like, if we would have known where Justin Timberlake lived. I would not have gone. I don't like crowds. Well, okay. That gave me anxiety watching just by association. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't imagine the levels of stress. If you need um, two people to take you to a cheesecake factory and tie one on, they're yeah. sitting right in front of you. Skinny Linish mojitos. <laughs> Skinny Licious mojitos. Uh, they're great. They're fantastic. Okay, there are so many songs that came out of that house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the most um, impressive thing is that I feel watching that inspired because I believe I too could have a rap career. I do too, I think we should put out a rap song. Yeah. Was there some protocol where everyone had to make a rap song before they, their tenure at the Team 10 house? Great. No. The first song I remember making, or mm -hmm. I was a part of, was It's Every Day Bro. Yes. And it's important the class. to- The <laughs> It's shaped humanity as we know it. Like what was the protocol? Who wrote the songs? Was okay, so- Think Tank? Yeah. People think that it's all a lot more structured. I mean, the world's structured to enable these things to happen. Sure. But it wasn't like, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna plan to make this music video and put that out, and it was it none of that was strategic. Mm -hmm. It was Jake literally woke up one day and said, we should do a music video, yeah. which meant making a song. Right. Right. So we went straight to the studio. We wrote it. Did you in already have studio. a studio you go to? Yes, there, I'm just, there's a bunch of places, people oh. that we know. Okay. So we went to the studio. I can't write quite clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done Very music smart. in my entire life. So Jake wrote mine for me. Um, and so he wrote England is my city. Yes, and you can see. Uh, wow, I'm appalled. <laughs> I'm Jake appalled. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, done, If done. he doesn't have a bio, come out called appalling. Ugh. But yeah, I, I read that line and just assumed it was a joke. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going along with it. I think it's funny. And uh -huh. so we record it. No one's saying anything because I think everyone just assumed it was a joke. <gasps> so then this is going through like recording. Then we filmed the music video the exact same day. Okay. Without a plan. When we woke up, there was no plan. Yeah. So we're running around the whole team's like calling people. Can we use this house? Can we do this? Blah, you got blah, a drone. Exactly. Who's got so, a car we can sit on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So then we ended up making this video in like 12 hours wow. and song. And I became a meme from it. So that's great. I mean, that's all we've been trying to do our whole lives. Right? Memes. Like and you, you get it right out of the got gate. Maimed. You got it out of the gate. That's <laughs> a little unfair to the rest of us. I mean, but also it's super impressive. Yeah. I don't know what's impressive about it. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> well, I think it's impressive just from the start of an idea, the initiation of an idea, to actual 
end product, the amount of time in which mm -hmm. you got that done is, you know, very impressive. Also, let me just say something real quick. You got a lot of finger pointing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because, okay, I don't know much about Team 10 and like really had only recently found out what it is and like mm -hmm. I've never watched any of the videos. I get really uncomfortable with pranks. Like I just Same. hate pranks. So it's just, it's just not my kind of jam. What is your proudest moment of working with Team 10? Like what was the time where you were like, we did that, that was rad. Or that you can take personal responsibility oh, yes. for it because I feel like you, one thing that I've realized in watching this part of the docuseries is that you sort of either you let people do this or they did it without your like emotional permission. You People took credit for what was probably a lot of hard work on your end. Uh -huh. And so what's something that you did that you can personally say like I did this and that made me feel proud? The proudest moment uh, of watching them go off and do something that I helped put together was the tour. Even more emotional because it was whilst I was leaving, they were going on tour. Oh, so geez. I'm sat at home, I've just left and all this stuff is going on, people are talking, but I'm seeing them on tour and I'm seeing all the clips of them mm -hmm. working super hard every single day because they're doing performances, they're dancing, right. they're singing. They're not artists, they're social media people that mm -hmm. have delved into this space. Uh -huh. And I'm just super impressed that they're making music that is people are liking. Yeah, classic Crompton, oh given gosh. selflessness. No, a, a personal name. one. A personal one that I'm proud of was we performed at the Teen Choice Awards. It's every day, bro, and that was like I just said, England is my city on TV <laughs> at an awards show. What is going on? That is hilarious. Wow. Was it tough for you when the movie Straight Outta Compton came out? Like, was it just straight out of Crompton all day? And did you get any shirts made that said that? Yes, I did. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> but no, I didn't personally get them made. Did you made. give it to your family for Christmas? Because <laughs> that's Someone a great gift. <laughs> for Christmas, as a secret Santa, got me a straight out of Crompton. Okay, I knew it. <laughs> it had to be out there somewhere. I'm so glad I finally got to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, that's been on Mamie's mind <laughs> since we started our day today. Um, was there anything that you think went too far in the house? It's all that, out there. It's all out there. And to be very honest, I'm f relieved that it's fake. Because Same. I get such anxiety from people that are like bullying other people. And so was there anything in your opinion that just went too far that you wish in hindsight never happened? Jake jumping on the news van. Oh yeah. And the whole that whole thing that happened that day yeah. was we got to a point where we had to hire security who mm -hmm. stood outside yeah. the house and made sure all people because people were breaking in and stealing things. That's and crazy ass moms. Terrifying. Yes. So we got security that stood outside and they tried to disperse and keep everything going so the neighbors didn't get angry. Yeah. And the traffic flowed and all that kind of stuff. And the security came to the door and told me quite loudly that Channel 4 or whatever is here. So one of them heard it and then they all decided to go outside. And this was at a point where, because I asked Jake why he did that afterwards. Yeah. I was like, why couldn't you just leave that? It was like, well, everyone thinks I'm this person, so let's put on a show. And that's what he told me. Oh, interesting. Because nothing like what you saw in that video with the news thing, him uh -huh. jumping him on his uh, motorbike, none of that had ever happened before. Mm -hmm. We'd not disrupted the neighbors. The only thing that disrupted the neighbors was the people outside. And we were trying everything we could to stop that from happening. What about the fire? And yeah. the fire. I wish that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, well. that's yeah, a big the screaming one. And the gunshots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the constant sounding like murders are happening in the house. <laughs> Did you guys ever have any just nights in where you just like watched movies? Got so when the and sheet masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when the camera goes off, that is all we do. Really? We just sit around watching, we I play would games. Watch the out of that I would footage. Too. I don't need y'all spitting on each other and tasering each other. Give me you getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. Are you, do you still keep in touch with people you were in the house with? Everyone but Jake. Really? I, we didn't end on good terms, so I don't know. Do you think, do you think relationships, because you talked about in there like, people get thrown out of the house and then it's kind of like cut off. Do you think that will change once this docuseries is totally out and like people know like the falseness of some of the pranks and, and how it kind of worked. Do you think he'll, there'll be like a come around or like some truces, if you will? I mean, I feel like that was the hope out of this whole thing yeah. to make people realize that they just went through a crazy part of their lives and did some crazy dumb yeah. shit. And there's no, there was no like evil intentions. There was no one that was like doing anything bad to anyone. It was just a bunch of teenagers 
that were living together, making mm -hmm. a lot of money, and there was a lot of people watching them. I hope after this, like, yeah. everyone can just live happily and, like, yeah. it yeah. not be a big f deal anymore. Yeah. I can't imagine what a dick I'd be with money at 17. Oh my god, and I think it's so true because you said, too, that it's most closely related to what you would quantify as your college years. Oh yeah, which fascinating because people get so up in arms about it but when you think about what kids are doing at college like it's basically the same yeah thing. I mean I'm not rationalizing Jake's action because no. I also feel like it's very different when you're like misbehaving versus misbehaving with very a very vulnerable audience who wants yeah. to mimic exactly what you're doing I think that's the yeah. big difference holy sh I sound as smart yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that kind of stuff goes on. It's just without the platform. Yeah, the relief for me that it's fake is that these kids are watching the thing that he's obsessed with the most of making this fake content because kids are watching. So kids, you know, they're safer now knowing that these aren't real things that they should mimic and do to their friends and cause actual harm because their friends aren't in on the yeah. joke, aren't in on the prank. Well, that was heavy. What, um, what are your hobbies? When I am not working, I am probably in bed watching Netflix. What are you oh, watching? Yeah. The Good Place. Oh you, yes, our friend Darcy's that? on it. No. I watched a little <laughs> bit of it, uh, but I haven't gotten fully into but it. But Ted Danson will always be <coughs> high up there on my list. It's incredible. Do you like reality TV? I don't know. We kind of lived reality TV you know, for yeah. a long time in the a house. A big part of like uh, the strategy behind Team Ten mm -hmm. was the Kardashians. So oh, I, but see, they don't do anything but just sit. Exactly. And eat salad. But the whole thing of like, you are connected to this person and it doesn't matter, whatever they do, you're invested in them. Uh -huh. So it's like when we do put out music, it's because we're doing it and it because it's fun. And the audience knows that we're not musicians, but they're so invested in our mm -hmm. lives and mm -hmm. they like us that they're going to want to listen to it and be part mm -hmm. of this whole journey and process. Which Kardashian do you think you are? Oh my God. Who are you? Chloe. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I wouldn't have taken him back. I wouldn't have taken him back. Yeah. Anyway. Probably Chris. You're cr you are the Chris Jenner. <laughs> you are hundred percent. Oh my God, it's all making sense now. <laughs> I see you with the martini. I see you with. Oh yes. Is you're Jake... doing amazing, sweetie. You 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 doing amazing, sweetie. To all of them. <laughs> all of them. For years. Are you more excited for a Star Is Born or Venom? This is the one you're stumped on. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping things up. Okay, I know, so we want to ask you really quickly about like what's coming up for you, but I know you're very secret about it, right? Yes. You don't want to talk specifically about anything that's yeah. coming up. But to steal something from my own podcast interviewing technique, can you use three words or three small phrases to give us any clues as to what's happening in your future professionally? I mean, for me personally, uh -huh. I have a podcast coming up. <gasps> that's very exciting. Inspired by you. What? Yes. Am I your Kardashians? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. What's it but, called? Um, you're, the, you're the Kardashians, and I'm just Jonathan Chabon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. What's it yes. called? Are it's you allowed called, to say? Yes, it's called New World Order. Oh, NWO. Yes, it's all about like the new generation of kids that are coming in, uh -huh. and what's going to happen to the future when they're so obsessed with technology and social media. Talking about life. Talking about conspiracy theories, talking about theories of why we exist. So Just, you're going to so get all like philosophical, it's opposite Yeah, it's the opposite of, of my yes. podcast. Yes. Okay. We're yeah. going to get really So it's deep. Nick Crompton oh. with, this got deep. This got deep. <laughs> uh, wow. But it's with someone that was also on Team 10 and left. Okay. We're teaming up, Kid Spicer. Cool. And yeah, I can't wait to start talking about stuff. That's awesome. Congrats. Yeah. And on the business side, yeah. uh -huh. it's in music. And so I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff in that, not myself. If you want to create a single with me called Los Angeles is my continent. I'm oh, down. <laughs> it sells itself. It was really nice getting to know you. Yes, thanks for being here. It was Nick. I just want you to know how excited I am just to meet you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and good luck with everything. Because I'm sure it's going to be a tsunami coming your way with. But we're rooting for you. Up. And yep. like we said, if you need to hide out in a cheesecake factory, they're pretty dark. Bra, bra, and bra, we bra, can bra, take bra. it to a couple. They're really fun. Nick Crompton, everybody! Yay!
Today's gratitude problem comes from Year of the Bloom, and they say, super excited to share this paper portrait inspired by my favorite YouTubers, Grace and Mamrie, and their new show, This Might Get. These two keep me laughing every episode. This is incredible. That is your exact print of your t-shirt. How did you do this? I love this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Year of the Bloom. And you guys, be sure to subscribe, turn on your bell notifications, all that jazz. We are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with new episodes, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Instagram TV. I gotta go see if there's a new episode of the Shane Doc out. Also, I think I'm in love with Nick Crompton.